Hi, friends. I'm Lauren. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Okay, But Did You Know? A podcast where we talk about the TV and media that we love with a friend who's never seen it before. Today we're recapping and chatting about Once Upon a Time, episode 202, We Are Both. This episode aired on October 7th, 2012. It was written by Jane Espenson and was directed by Dean White, which is like the dream team for me. It, that's that's like my favorite writer and like the, the director who directed some of my favorite episodes, which is just amazing. Uh, so before we get into our recapping and chatting, let's go over a synopsis for this episode. In the Enchanted Forest some time ago, days before her wedding, Regina attempts to escape the castle and her fate, but is trapped by a spell her mother placed on the grounds. The more time she spends in the castle, Regina fears that she will become more like her mother, seeking nothing but power and vengeance. With the help of Rumpelstiltskin, she's able to banish Cora through a looking glass, giving her the freedom she desires. However, now that she's had a taste of magic, she wants more, and Rumpel offers her the chance to learn everything. In Storybrooke, with the town reeling after the Wraith attack, everyone is struggling more than ever to find their loved ones and get life back to normal. Regina is desperate to get Henry back, as well as her magic, and Rumble is planning a trip for yet-to-be-revealed reasons. When she gets her shortcut back to her magic, Regina uses it to entice Henry to come home with her. The townspeople are terrified and threaten to leave town to avoid this threat. But Charming convinces them to stay, stating that giving up this life to go back to only their cursed memories won't solve anything. What will help is if they embrace both sides of their lives now and be who they want to be. When he goes to save Henry, Regina has realized that she can't make him love her, and if she wants to be redeemed, she's going to have to let him go. And in the Enchanted Forest today, now captured by Mulan and Aurora, Emma and Snow are brought to their safe haven and locked in an underground pit until their leader can deal with them. However, once inside, they encounter none other than Korra. This was a ride, this episode. It it was. And I, I even have a note randomly, like I say in the middle of my notes, um, that just goes, we're 13 minutes in and still no snow and Emma. What the fuck? No, no none. That's the thing. I think, I think I said this in like an earlier episode of season one that like when we get to season two, it's going to be, you're not going to see everybody all the time. I think I said something about like, mm-hmm. I don't think Mary Margaret's even in that episode. I'm like, oh wait, maybe it's this guy is not in this episode. I couldn't remember who. Um, so this one we're not always going to see all the timelines so Mm -hmm. you might see I think for a couple episodes you're going to see like just Enchanted Forest past and just Enchanted Forest present or just flashback and just Storybrooke Mm -hmm. Um, so we're not going to see everybody all the time it gave people a little bit of a reprieve which is nice considering for a good chunk of last season Jennifer Morrison I think was in every episode well with that too there's so many characters now and so many different story arcs you're trying to go through because like we still have everything going on with Mulan and Aurora and then you've got oh Pinocchio hi hello Sebastian Stan's here again and like we're all over the place (laughs) and I'm just like yeah okay and Uh but my I think one of my favorite parts of this episode though is like because my first note is just I love Leroy and he's so funny Uh in this episode I do (laughs) Like, unfortunately, oh. this is the beginning of him basically just kind of being the town crier and just coming, running in, yelling, the curse is here, or terrible news. That's basically all he's good for for the yeah. rest of the show. But he's funny when he does it. Like, that he is. There's that. We Something, but the way he says, we must investigate the line. I don't know why that tickles me so much. He's such good delivery. I mean, poor Sneezy, but at the same time, I'm yeah. just like, what is he doing? What is happening? Poor, Leroy. poor Sneezy, apropos considering we're both sick. Yes, we apologize in advance for this episode. We both... Uh, the audio might be a little off. Our voices aren't necessarily their best. We're trying to trying to do our best. but Trying it's... to tough it out because we don't want to take a longer break. <laughs> yeah, we already took... like Not that there was a break for, for listeners, but we took off two weeks for various reasons and vacations and stuff. And it's... We're, no more. No more breaks. <laughs> That and we're friends. We miss each other. <laughs> that too. Also, we just like enjoy doing this. Um, so I do like Charming more now. Yeah. Now that he's not David Nolan. Like I I know this whole episode was about we're both at a but same time. I'm like, yeah. thank goodness you're not completely insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little more decisive. I actually no, to be fair, I would say he's a little more decisive, except for the fact that he spent the entire episode going, I don't know what to do. And then, like, him giving himself a two-hour deadline and being like, I don't know, but I've got two hours to figure it out. And I'm like, you set that for yourself. That he did. Like, 
I don't know. Um, what what was the thought process here, oh, sir? Oh, oh, I don't was know. going on there. And no for clue. the kid to be the one to call him out, and I I die every time Henry says Gramps. Gramps. I need a shirt that just says Gramps now, apparently, because yeah. like I love it so much. Gramps, the curse was broken because of me. Let me help, or not. <laughs> I, I wrote down a few lines that Ooh. I really loved through this episode because okay. the writers did an amazing job with the it's banter. Jane Espenson. It's Jane I, Espenson. That's what it is. It's I love humor. it. The first one, though. I think I know what it is. I will not listen to childcare lectures from a man who put his daughter in a box and shipped her to Maine. Might I remind you that daughter was minutes old. Yep. That whole scene. I love that whole scene. Um, I need, I feel like I need to recite it only because my voice is deep enough that my charming might actually sound good. <laughs> Cause everything about that scene is amazing. It's a, it's, it's phenomenal. And I'm just sitting there this whole time. Like, I'm just, you know, rooting on Regina at this point, which was funny in itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my favorite line, though, my favorite one was definitely, are the nuns still nuns or can they <laughs> date? <laughs> Fucking whale. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> I mean, the, the thing with whale, uh, what I didn't catch, what I, what I hadn't caught before was after that, because you don't see me, it's just, it's just, you hear it. But with um, the captions, is, you can see that he says, um, you can see that he kept, he kept talking and goes, don't say it's me asking. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and of course, then realizing, oh, they can't leave. They they can't no. leave. It's they can't leave. Wouldn't recommend. No. Um, and then uh, conscience, dude. My brain. Oh, Archie. Archie. Thank you, conscience, dude. Um, him showing conscience, up, dude. <laughs> being like Regina. Do you need to talk? Still being this like yeah. great person, and her just being, oh, right, the conscience thing. Like she's just yeah. like, now I have to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, just, I'll write the conscience thing. That she's so hilarious. focused on what she, that was so good. She's so I mean, she's so focused on what she wants out of this moment. And it's not talking to Archie. Mm-mm. No, no one actually wants to talk to Archie. Except maybe Henry. I mean, Archie's the only one that listened to Henry for so long. Fair. Because Henry was right. He was like, you lied to me. You made me think I was crazy. No. You were like, oh, with yeah. everything you did was so messed up. And now you're going to trap me here. And she's like, but look, a cupcake. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Henry is like completely justified in 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 his response to that, and like Regina is trying; she's not doing too well, um, but she's she's trying. I give her that; she's she, she's she's trying. I just have a line that says, "Well, that got dark," and um, yeah, that got dark. All of it. Are we talking? Are we talking um, about Regina's daydream? Yeah, like Regina's yeah. daydream and Little Snow, and I was just like. What is hap? What are yeah, you doing? I, I I wrote down okay, evil maladaptive daydream. I see you. Like I get it, but oh my, this will make you laugh. This will make you laugh. Okay. So put your tea down. Yeah, we're put both drinking tea just to keep ourselves going. Because <laughs> we're both our, our 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 throats have seen better days. Oh yeah. So I wrote down Pinky and the Brain recites in my head now every time I see these two together. I'm literally watching <laughs> this. It's a serious moment. And I'm just like, Pinky and the Brain. Pinky but to be and fair. And the Brain. <laughs> are, we, are, are you talking about the one in the Enchanted Forest or in no, Storybrooke? No, when they were in Storybrooke and she's looking for the book. Because I was going to say, in, the one in, in the Enchanted Forest is not that serious considering it starts with Rumpelstiltskin, I that summoned was hilarious. me. <laughs> I did like, like, oh no, that's when I wrote just a couple lines later, oh my god, Pinky and the Brain meet. <laughs> yes. Obviously it's not when they first meet when he's like, oh no, I've held you. And I'm like, okay, this is, she, uh-huh. sure, I don't know about that, that yet, but. Um, let's, 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 um, I'll talk about that later. I'll enjoy this as I will right now of her being so young and not realizing her power she's and all so these sweet. things. And she's so sweet and innocent. And I'm just sitting here like, you turn into a crazy bitch and it's wonderful. For the first part of the season, we see the it. our only flashbacks of Regina, our young Regina for the first part of the season. We actually don't see the evil queen until 209 at all. That's fun though i'm excited for that because i know she gets well, she gets to play with the younger version so much more i mean let's be fair it's it's two but like still like she's there's only there's only two flashbacks that she's involved in in the first part of the season but it's still the fact of it took nine episodes for us to see the evil queen when she's so prevalent in the first season right yeah 
Well, and then she's still Evil Queen, you know, now that she's got some power back within Storybrooke. No need for a fuss. It's just little old me. Like, she's just, she's hamming it up. Um, you'll enjoy this. At one point, I just wrote, this show, always ominous and confusing. (laughs) I mean, yeah. Because there's so much going on, and I'm like, I know, that's gonna be for, like, most of the episode. Apparently, I need to just start time stamping these. Because thoughts come into my brain, I type them out, and then I tell them to yep. you. I have, it's, uh-huh. my notes are chaotic. Um, the fucking portals. Dude. Yeah. I, what the it's fuck? The, it's, it's the irony of, he says to David, portals are just outside my purview, immediately before we see the flashback, where he gives Regina a portal. I'm literally sitting here just like, dude, what is happening? Why? Portals are only here when we need them. But portals are hard to come by unless the plot dictates otherwise. And the fact that he had access to that lock, that looking glass and why that one seems to lock where other ones don't Mm -hmm. is never explained. Never. Never. That's annoying. Because I believe the only other time, the reason, okay, so we see in later seasons, we'll see like the portals to the world where Korra ends up, those get sealed basically for good, which is why there's going to be other workarounds that need to happen. Mm Mm-hmm. But they're not sealed, but she still can't come back. I It's I, it's unclear. It's basically, this, the story they wanted to tell is she's stuck somewhere. She's happy where she gets stuck, let's be real. She, she, stuff works out very well for her. But, uh, but yeah, that, that, that whole, that looking glass situation, why it shatters, it's, it's, it's all very, it's ticket. all very. It's a one-way ticket. <laughs> it's a one-way ticket. It's dramatic. Does it make a whole lot of sense? No, but it's Jane Espenson. I trust Jane Espenson. Okay, that's fair. Actually, now that I'm thinking, I don't think she wrote the other episode that I'm thinking of. I don't think so. That ha- that was most likely Adam and Eddie, but I'm going to double check. Um, I did write, though, charming, charging in with a sword. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. No, it's like, and her thing of, like, you know, it's like, you won't be using your sword. Anything you conjure, I can fight. I mean, you won't need your sword. Like, relax. But, you know, when in doubt, bring the pointy thing. I, I guess. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. You're the romance reader. I'm the fantasy reader. When in doubt, you bring the pointy thing. This this is true. And I was right. Adam, the, the, the episode I was thinking where like the, the portals concealed mm-hmm. was Adam and Eddie, which makes sense because it's the hundredth episode. So that makes sense that they wrote it. All right. The last line that I wrote down that I loved was, of course, from Leroy. It's off to work we go, and the way he yeah. walked, the way he he said it was so much confidence, and then like mm-hmm. walked away with like a swagger, and I'm just sitting here yeah. laughing. Dying, laughing, like, dude, <laughs> what, yeah. what are you going to go mine? They're going to go mining for pixie dust, or for fairy dust, sorry. But is that in Storybrooke? It can be, yeah. With magic, there it can be there. Once again, this show is ominous and confusing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, they're going to go mining for fairy dust, or for the, for the diamonds okay. that will, they can crush into fairy dust. Um, and I did write, like, at the beginning, oh my god, he blinked, and then by the end, I'm like, where the fuck is Pinocchio? Yeah, uh, August so, is, uh, uh, is, you'll you'll see him again. You'll see what happened to him eventually. But, see, I feel like he would want to leave, though. He would want mm-hmm. to no longer be Pinocchio. But there's no guarantee, though. I mean, I guess that if he steps out of the land with magic, maybe he would. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the thing is, there's no guarantee that if he steps outside the bounds of Storybrooke, if he would turn back into a man or if he would just turn into an animate wood. Because yeah, he was turning into he was turning into Ugh. wood in the land without magic. His for him and Emma, it's so confusing since they were not present in well, the Enchanted Forest for the curse. Emma and Henry, Emma and Henry can leave. That's that's always a thing. That's still a thing. They're okay. not affected at this point. But yeah, that's he. He's got the extra thing of in Storybrooke without magic, he was turning back into wood, but he was turning back into inanimate wood. So if he were to step outside the bounds of Storybrooke, he probably would just turn into a puppet. He wouldn't turn back into a man. Because he turned into an inanimate puppet before the magic came back to Storybrooke. This show. This show. Why'd you make me do this? That makes sense to me, personally. I'm discussing a puppet. I mean, (laughs) but still, that made sense to me. It does. It makes sense. Um, And then I got really mad at the end because I'm like, now. Now we get Emma and Stowe. And let's end it with Cora. And I'm just sitting here like... And then, of course, immediately I'm texting you, your name in yeah. all caps, like I do when I'm angry. And I'm just like, yep. this is not what I wanted. 
And I'm like, as I said, like as in the text, I'm like, well, at first I said, like, just wait for that last shot. Just wait for that. Um, and then it was. Uh, and then you shared all my typos. <laughs> and then I, it's fine. But then it was, yeah, it was wait for the last shot. And then it was say hello to our season two big baddie. Um, oh man, I'm excited though. If Cora's the big baddie, like let's go. I'm 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 ready. It's gonna it's gonna be chaotic. But yeah, so this season, I I think that this season is structurally the soundest. Um, like last season, it, it feels very different mm-hmm. personally. Like season one just feels different. It's got a different story structure. It's got different ways to, ways of storytelling. When it comes to the way that they're gonna tell stories going forward, this one has the I feel like the most cohesive arc, and I think they do the best of kind of bringing in all the different elements that need to be interconnected, like that aren't necessarily all the same, as well as they have the longest standing big baddie because Korra is going to be in through, through up through episode through episode 16, but she's even episodes that she's not in, she's still kind of involved. Mm. I like, like that. It's, it's, she's still, she's still a looming presence. She's still altering things. Even if she's not in the episode, Versus, like, as we go forward, each big baddie is going to get 11 episodes at most because after for a while we're going to have our, our half-season kind of things. And then, even then, if they're not in every episode, they may not necessarily be affecting every episode. So she affects more episodes overall, I, feel like I would say. Cora and she affects a lot of things from what I've seen. She's a very looming presence, this woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, well, so is Rumpel, which is always interesting. He is, yeah. Which, finding out, like, he is so old. Rumpel is Rumpel is narrative chaos. That's what I like to call him. When um when the plot needs to be moved forward by some kind of narrative element, it's almost always Rumpel Stiltskin going back on his word. Which is so funny since deals are so important to him. He's the man who doesn't break deals. He's like, ah, but I found a loophole. But did you though? Like the Wraith was not a loophole. That was you being a jerk. That exactly. That was you being an asshole. So that's uh that's that's i i like i like this season for 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 what it's worth i think i mean this this i think this is structurally i think the the most interesting the most interesting uh season and the most cohesive season like that's i love good. the stories that i i love the stories as we go forward but for the most part uh i think this one probably is the strongest i'm excited to see more of mulan and aurora i can't even remember the guy's name anymore like that, that's how little Phillip. he mattered thank you philip didn't matter but no, we don't need Philip. We we have Mulan. We're not I, like I said. We're not gonna we're not gonna see him again for a while. So I think you're okay. Good because he's not needed. The only and time you see him in season, t- yeah. The only time you see him in season two is a flashback. So it really won't matter. But I did want to go back because the line about the child collectors from man who put his daughter in a box and shipped her to Maine. That whole scene because I have a rant about the final line of that scene. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> of course I do. But it starts with him just kind of like literally just barging into her house going with a hat. Also, I, I have a I have an apology after this as well. Okay. I know. So tell me about this. Surprise, you don't have armed guards around the clock. Don't need them. We both know if you step outside, there's a line a mile long for your head. Who's going to risk coming at me? Take your chances then. But I think that little wallpaper trick was an anomaly. If you had your abilities back, this town would be charcoal by now. You're in problems with magic, aren't you? Where now the only thing keeping you alive is that Henry wishes it. Now this. It's the hat that pulled your loved ones away. Where did you get it? I've long since forgotten. You know what? Maybe you should be less concerned with hats and making and more concerned with taking care of my son. Uh, because you took such great care of him. I will not listen to child collectors from a man who put his daughter in a box and shipped her to Maine. Okay. Listen. I need my family. There's magic here now. There have to be ways to follow them. Follow them where? Into a sucking airless void and good luck getting magic to work. Because as you said, you'd be charcoal. Ah, uh, frustrated are we? Serves you right. You earned every bit of this. Keep on baiting me, charming. Right now I don't have magic and I don't have my son. But when I get one, I get the other. And you don't want to be around when that happens. If you have to use magic to keep your son, you don't really have him. This is my thing with that line. I understand the interpretation of, right now I don't, right now I don't have magic and I don't, and I don't have my son, but when I get one, I get the other. I understand the interpretation of, when I get magic, I get Henry. I get that. What he's missing intentionally because he's idiot number two is when she gets Henry, she gets magic. Her emotions will stabilize and her magic will work again. And even when she does get him, it doesn't work because she doesn't get him. 
Well, by then she'd already kind of had the, the shortcut back to her mm-hmm. magic. So she didn't necessarily, not that she didn't need him, but magic is very much tied to emotions on the show. That's something that was kind of very evident. And we see Regina's magic kind of, kind of works when she's trying to light the candle because at this point, and I think in the first episode as well, she's realized that her magic is very heavily tied to her rage because that's what Rumpelstiltskin mm-hmm. taught her. Is she, that's the that's the emotion that she's tied her magic to, and if your emotions are kind of unstable or if you're in a very emotionally volatile place, then your magic's not going to work very well. Contrarily, if you feel very big emotions and you're, you're also unstable, but you're feeling them very strongly, your magic's going to be very powerful, and that'll come into fa- into factor in season three. But with that, it's just it's that thing of like it's not just when I get, it's not just when I get my magic, I get my son. It's when I get my son, I get my magic. And I'm just like, she understands that like he is, is a stabilizing force for her. And, uh, and uh, charming idiot number two is forgetting that. Yeah. Well, like with her magic too, like I get the, the thing with all that though, but she didn't seem to get like all of it back. She seemed to have only like a portion of it. Like it doesn't, at this like, point she's got full control of her magic. I guess it's full control again. Cause it didn't at feel point, that yeah. way. If it felt dimmed down, it's still the factor of like magic works differently in Storybrooke. So there okay. is that to keep in mind. I think she's also intentionally holding back because, I mean her her full force magic is literally setting armies on fire. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need to do that. Although I do appreciate that we set the same set on fire twice. <laughs> I just this is where we get like some of that like first time viewer and uh, season viewer because I'm sitting here like it seemed dimmed down without realizing it's because of yeah. where they are not yeah what she has so exactly. it's very interesting that's where you get that little tidbit of like I interpreted it this way <laughs> yeah but like so because I've only seen up to this point you have so yeah. much more information than I do. Mm-hmm. And this is where my apology comes in because I think what last did you do? week or last episode <laughs> no what I said was that. I interpreted it as Regina not knowing, genuinely not knowing that the Enchanted Forest was still there. I completely forgot about that one line from the, from the scene with her assistant where she says, we, we're both keeping that little secret about yeah. the Enchanted Forest still being there. So that that is entirely me. I was wrong. Which is I surprising. Wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to be facetious. I just forgot. So no, I, I, love I, that. I fully blame myself. Nah, you're good. I think it's kind of funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> because- I just, because I... I I remember that scene, but like I just forgot about that conversation. It gets pinky in the brain. They have quite a few conversations. That they do. That they do. Speaking of that conversation, though, because there was a lot of tidbits in there. One of them, I think, was but one of them, I think, was just they thought it would be funny, and it's just it's hilarious what ended up coming out of it. But um, which I'm not gonna say because mm-hmm. I mean spoilers, kind of, but not really. It's the I, it's the I don't care if they turn me green line at the very end. I'm like, oh, that's funny. Um, Rumple says to her as she walks out, you know, I told you a long time ago that you don't look like her. Uh, and, but I see it now. Mm-hmm. I was at the time I was in the camp of, oh, Lana should play young core because if they're going to, if they're going to make that correlation, that would be kind of cool to have her do that. She doesn't. The actor who plays her is fun. Who plays young Cora is phenomenal. And I truthfully would not recast it any other way. So Ooh, I'm, I'm excited okay to with see that. It. I'm okay with that. I want to tell you who it is, but I, I feel like I shouldn't. Uh, how long until I see? Uh, episode 16. Good God. Okay, I have a ways to go. I have a ways to go. It's 14 episodes from now. I can give you a hint, but you might hate me more. I mean, I'm not sure. With I like my being squirrel mute, brain. Apparently. With my squirrel brain, like, will I even pick up on it? I don't know. It's an actor from a show that you know really well. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the shows I know. Hey, I don't like this. Because I love, I love, like, I've just restarted the Orville. Like, I, I rewatch a lot of my comfort shows. It's a, it's a comfort show for you. I know, I know this for a fact. Wait, who is it? Now I need to know. That's so mean. I know. I'm so mean. <laughs> How about if I just tell you the show? Yeah, tell me the show. Someone Uncharmed. Okay, that's only like four possibilities. It's one of the main people. Original main or replacement main? Replacement main. Really, it's Rose? Uh-huh. She it's plays Rose Rancor. McGowan? She's... McCowan? I can't say her name. I'm sorry. She's so good. She's so good. 
Oh, I'm actually really excited because you know me and Charmed. Oh my goodness. I, I grew know. up on Charmed. Like everybody else so, was watching Supernatural. No, no, no. I was watching Charmed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the one that I've, I've, I told a couple people that like when, the, when you find out that she's on the show, you're going to get mad at me. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm not mad. I'm excited. No, no. I'm one of the few that was like not mad that they replaced Shannon Doherty uh-huh. um, because Prue just wasn't my favorite. That's uh, I, I was a, I was a, uh, oh my God, Phoebe and Piper fan. Like I love Piper. Everybody loves Phoebe, but Piper is my first true love. So yeah. Holly Marie Combs still has my heart <laughs> and always but Ro- Rose does such a good job as young Cora. When I, when I watched that, mm-hmm. the episode after it aired and everything, I was just watching it on my computer. I hadn't realized that the, it had shifted from the storybook or, from the current to uh to flashback because i heard her talking i i thought it was barbara just the way she talks it was she's, she's a phenomenal so, actress she's so good i cannot wait man i gotta wait 14 episodes for that you got you're waiting a while for it but it's gonna now i'm gonna away. have to start my rewatch of charmed for the 15th time <laughs> oh no oh how terrible i need to get those on dvd <laughs> how awful but I do love that Cora is back. I mean, I this is evidence. I love Cora. Mm-hmm. I think we established this in in when one eighteen when you was like, I don't think anyone likes her mother, and I'm like, how do I put this delicately? <laughs> That's Lauren fair. has Lauren has problems. Um, uh, yeah, I mm, I but, say that with Cora, love. <laughs> Cora is just she's so she again she's so compelling to watch. She is. She's so good. She's she just imbues power, and like you can really see again. You can see Lana and Barbara's relationship in every scene that the two of them are in. It's it's Lana's line of like, "Mama, I don't want to marry the king." I'm just like, it hurts because she does love her mother. It's so she does. Oh man, it's also seeing that it's not just like a mother versus daughter. It's it's so much like that connection's got to be completely different than what I think most people realize. It is, and like Re- Regina, just really she wants her mother's approval. She wants her mother's love, and like she, I think she's got her mother's love to an extent. Like she's because with as we, her Cora Cor, Cor loves her t- to an extent. There's there's mm-hmm. a barrier. There's something there's something holding her back there, but it's there's just there's so much in that dynamic, and we do see a good chunk of it throughout the course of the entire show, not just season two, which is even which is even better. Because we'll see more of Cora's backstory in season three. We'll see more with um, even with even younger Regina as a kid in season five. And like, there's just Cora does love her, but she's it's she's she always puts power over everything else. Is what I, they kind of said in the, in the synopsis. Is like she she puts power above everything else. It makes me think about the different interpretations of love because there's so many different ways you can love someone. Yeah, that no one and then and on top of that, too, when it comes to parental love, we can't expect our parents to love them the way we want them to. Yeah, they're going to love us the way they love us. We can't put yeah. expectation on that. So like mm-hmm. having that mentality, as I do, I, I think yeah. I see Cora differently than most people would at this point. Like probably. Yeah, you know, she probably is, like you said, the big next big baddie and all that. I, I really enjoy Cora. I love her acting. I love the yeah. dynamic. I'm really enjoying her. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm really, I'm loving this because there's been multiple, like multiple times throughout us doing this. You've been like, I think we're not going to have the same opinion about this or that. And then it ends up, oh wait, we do. (laughs) So it's really funny. Well, Cora was one that I hoped she would grow on you. Cause I know after the first episode, there's not a lot. No. Much much like I say about Regina in the first season, there's not a lot about her to like, there's not a lot about Cora to like in the first episode that she's in. Um, and so much of like, she's the big baddie. She's at, at, she's adversarial with uh, that's not a word but whatever she's, <laughs> she's the antagonist of the season she's antagonizing literally everybody right i love but a good antagonist she's so good but it's she's coming at it from a place of uh, everything she does is out of a place of what's best for regina like it really really is like yes it's the power climbing but like at this point season two there's no there's no power left to climb like no no one's there's, there's nothing left like she's pretty so, powerful she at this point so at this point it's just it's it's just to get regina's pretty much just to get regina's love back is something Mm -hmm. and it's a little bit from a narcissistic perspective i have a book on that like (laughs) if if, it it kind of is 
she's she's missing that like what she used to have kind of that unconditional loving of her from regina that she's trying to kind of get that back a little bit um because she kind of because it's what she said in 118 you know with regina like it's not your life it's mine Mm -hmm. so she does see regina as an extension of herself so there's a little bit of narcissistic personality disorder going on there like a lot of moms do that if you think about it like yeah it's a very so it's, motherly thing that happens it may not be a healthy thing but it happens no. all the time yeah, i mean cora's is definitely not in a healthy perspective <laughs> just no just saying but like we do see uh, with much of the show um you know breaking cycles and stuff like that and um and we do see cycles repeating as we saw regina get strung up by the trees and then henry again which funnily enough actually with all the international translations of the episode of the episode titles, most of them had something to do with the both aspect, mm-hmm. but French was just prisoners. That's I like it. See, the French have some very interesting titles on these. I like they're it. always they're always the odd one out. I enjoy it. I think they're doing great. They can't wait to see more. But uh, yeah, but with Regi- Regina, she's it's the start of breaking the cycle of you know. Bad because a lot of we're gonna see a lot of our villains have traumatic backstories. That's just kind of that's, that's what they that's what they mm-hmm. gave our characters is all of our villains are the physical embodiment of trauma. Um, because why not? No wonder I enjoy this show so much. <laughs> but we're gonna start seeing you know the cycle breaking of you know not so right parents villain character who then breaks the cycle to kind of be better mm-hmm. for their heroic child. So we're going to see that a lot with Regina and especially, I mean, with that last scene uh, with her and him on the stairs, which just like, it's, it hurts. It, like, not that it hurts to watch, but it's just like, she's learning and like, it's, this is the beginning. They call it this Regina's redemption tour. Like she, she's, it's, she's going to have setbacks. It's not going to be linear because no one's progress is linear. No. Like she's going to, she's going to have reasons that we shall see why she doesn't always do the exact right thing by like by everybody, but she does she 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 wants to try and i think that's what matters is like because like the the through line well, has of the to show start is somewhere any it has to start it, it has to start somewhere because like the through line with the show is like anyone is worthy of redemption if they if they truly want it if they truly try so it's you know she uh she, she's gonna have some pretty serious setbacks like thinking about like, where this season goes but it's just like you know she she gets on his level like with the staircase and she just goes she just admits she's like I shouldn't have brought you here. I don't know how to love very well. I wasn't capable of it for a very long time, but I know, I remember, that if you hold on to someone too hard, that doesn't make them love you. And, like, she apologizes. Like, yes, it's a small thing. Like, she's got a lot more work to do to make up for everything that she did to him in the first season. Um, But, you know, she, she, much like with Cora, she did what she thought was best. Mm -hmm. Which was, you know, I mean, to be fair, again, thinking, thinking about real world logic, if he wasn't, if he wasn't right, if the curse wasn't actually real, indulging it wouldn't have been the right course of action. True. This is interesting, so, like, with all of this, though, it's like, it looks like the season two theme is very much motherly love, which we're getting yeah. from so many different aspects because you've got Every Regina side. and Henry, Cora and Regina, Emma and Henry. We finally get to see what's going to happen between Emma and Snow, like, because I can only imagine how, how Emma feels with, like, my parents put me in a tree. <laughs> minutes old we're going back to that like what the heck you guys like what she said in the last episode in the next episode we are going to see uh kind of emma and mary margaret kind of fighting like not not fighting but like snow is snow mary i'm not starting to interchanging their names snow is gonna kind of try and lead the way and emma is used to being very independent right because she's oh yeah out into the world by herself for 28 years and now she's stuck in the enchanted forest yeah literally (laughs) And she's now she's stuck in the enchanted forest with snow, and she wants to still rely on her own instincts and her own knowledge and know how. That's not but where she's this from. A, it's it's a realm with entirely different threats, entirely different rules. So snow is coming at it from the right place of like, I know what I'm doing. Let me let me lead here, and Emma mm-hmm. doesn't really want to yet. So it can be mis- it can be seen as like that, like she's being the wrong type of mother for her for her adult daughter, which really we I feel like we see that more yeah in the second half of the season not so much in the first part because the first part there is the very real thing of emma's not from here she doesn't know how to fight these battles she doesn't know how to fight these these demons and these beasts that they're going to encounter but mary margaret does you know she's been here she can 
I think at one point she's gonna shoot an arrow and she's like has her, she's like she's like how do you do that she's like she's like when was the last time, oh, was, when was the last time you did that she's like I think 28 years ago I guess it's like riding a bike <laughs> I mean it is oh, I... it, it kind of is but it kind of oh is. my god the just complete complete tangent just in my granny with her crossbow that was a wonderful moment. I was just like, I love Granny. Granny's right. Granny, Granny's right. Granny, do you really need this? Damn right I need it. We've got a lawless town, Ruby. I'm like, okay, Granny Vigilante. Okay, I see you. I mean, they are wolves, so. They are. I mean, to be fair, she doesn't wolf out anymore. She's, she's well, done. Well, but like with that, though, magic is back. And they know that magic is back. And 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 with knowing that magic is back, it's like, it, Granny's right. Anything could happen. They just had a wraith destroy the town. Anything could happen. She's going to be prepared. Yeah. She's yeah. lived a long life. <laughs> mm-hmm. She knows. <laughs> yeah. It just makes me think of, oh, man. The very hearty, like, southern grandma. That's what it makes me think mm-hmm. of. It's like, I don't care. I'm doing this. Like, yeah, you're going to listen to me. And it makes me happy. She's she's the homesteader. I'm just looking through my notes again, just like with Regina and Cora's scene right before she mm-hmm. shoves her through the looking glass. Um, Cora teaching your daughter how to basically take over the throne is not the kind of pre-wedding advice most people give. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> good saying. advice. It's good advice. It's not bad advice. But like throughout the entire episode, um, you know, after R- Regina's, you know, evil maladaptive daydream, like they 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 brought in Billy Madison just so she could like. Just so that she could choke her into dream yeah. and then call it a day. But then, that poor kid. Oh, that poor kid. That but poor then kid. all I can think about is when she's about to push Cora into the mirror. Is Rumple showing up, being like, like it's push, <laughs> a little push, <laughs> a little push. But like that, the entire episode, Regina's just like, I don't want to be Cora. I don't want her life. I don't want to be like her. And obviously, as we see, there's a lot of parallels between Cora and Regina in Storybrooke. Yes. So obviously, it's 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 the kind of thing that we don't want to be our parents. And sometimes that's just what ends up happening. And then we're more like, similar than we'd like to admit. Exactly. It's like, it's the whole thing is I don't, I don't want it. It's that line of, I don't want power. I want to be free. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, a lot of what, what I say about Regina and her actions for a lot of the show, mostly in this, like the storybook main arc going forward, but any, but throughout the entire show, really so much of what she does is reactionary. There are times where she does stuff unprompted, like setting entire villages on fire because she got angry, which you know what you, you do you babe. But there <laughs> like, okay sometimes sometimes that's just how you have to you know get the feelings out but so much of what she does is reactionary uh mm-hmm. to what's being to what's happening around her it's like i could do the right thing but i'm getting you know fought back against anyway so i'm just gonna go do this now so much of it is i let me see if i can see what i wrote down because i think i wrote down a lot nicer than i'm gonna be saying it <laughs> I don't want power. I, so my our brains are not working anymore. I wrote down, I don't want power. I want to be free, which honestly is kind of still how Regina is toward the end. She doesn't necessarily want power of the masses or power over everybody. She wants the freedom to be who she is, not who people perceive her as. Damn, that's good. She unfortunately does need to lean into some kind of perception in order to get that. But because I think she finds that kind of like that level of like separation safe. Mm hmm. You know, if they're going to perceive me as this anyway, sure, I'll be that, but I know that I'm not really that way behind closed doors kind of thing. Sounds I can just like kind of, some just, uh, to... introspection is needed. A little bit. Maybe a, little, maybe a bit. little more therapy than she's getting. Um, maybe not but... from Archie. Maybe not from Archie. Uh, <laughs> Her little that's my thug. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> he has a PhD from a curse. Um, so... <laughs> That's my thing with Regina and like with Cora. And I mean, like, what obviously it's very powerful to see her first bit of magic to be separating herself from her mother, someone who made her kind of hate magic. And now because of that, mm-hmm. she loves the taste of it. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's putting her down uh, an interesting path. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. So, should we do some stats and then I can go into my last thing about David's We Are Both yes. speech? Oh, goodness. Yes. I have thoughts. I I had a feeling you would. My 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 score is very simplistic. It's just eights across the board, um, because it's good. Plot was was pretty good. I don't have too many complaints. There were of course moments that I'm like, all right, on to the next thing. Because like, while I was happy to see Sebastian stand, nothing really came of it. 
Yeah, he he's gonna be involved again in a couple of either in Storybrooke in the next episode, mm-hmm. or he will be involved again. I think it's the next episode, and then he's gonna be in a flashback in episode five. Um, and, but that's about it. Yeah, with character Rumble just kept pissing me off because I'm sitting here and I'm like, apparently he wants to get out of there, of course, which I don't blame yeah. him. But like, where's Belle? Like, your guess is as good as mine. Where's Belle? <laughs> Uh, pers- but yeah, eights, eights across the board, 24 for me. Good episode, not terrible. I enjoyed it. Uh, just a base score for, I think most of, I think of, this is around where I uh, rated a lot of these episodes. Yeah. No, that's fair. I wanted this to be a 30. Mm. I really tried. What did it? It, get, it gets a 10 for personal, a 10 for character. It gets a nine for plot, so it gets a twenty-eight. I, it's it's like it's like they're not big enough for me to take off a good chunk of points. Mm-hmm. It was just enough that I felt like I had to, and it has everything to do with the way people talk about Rumpelstiltskin's past with Cora and Regina, uh, because Henry says Henry Senior says that uh, Rumpel is someone that Cora knew before she met him. Mm-hmm. No, just just no. Um, and like it's this is within the same season where this gets negated, which is why oh, I'm like being like no, it's that. And then also Rumple's line of um, "I held you in my arms," also just no. Um, not that not that we would have a chance to see that. So like maybe it did happen, but just for how things go into sixteen, just just no. So this is all within the same season. So no 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 plot points for you writers. So. I guess a 29 i wanted it to be a 30 but they're just i was just like this gets negated within 15 episodes so i'm going I'm to not. uh continue to laugh that my animated show sometimes has better continuity than your live action it's, show i think it's just it's plot it's it's but also it's these things of like they're like these throwaway lines that i think for the most part if people aren't watching, like if I think if you're just watching the show, and even on a rewatch, you probably wouldn't pick up on these kinds of things. If you aren't me, like I was gonna say, not not you. I'll I'll admit it's a it's a me thing. I like that's what it is. So the continuity has is always on like the if, which is why that was a like a major thing that I would count in mm-hmm. my old stats rewatch because the continuity was like we're gonna negate things within like two episodes. Okay. I think that's what happens when you've got like it's the job of the showrunner to make sure everything's cohesive, right? Like, yes, there's a reason why writers' rooms work the way they do. Where like you've got like you know six or seven different writers and other staff members all working on these episodes together to get like the dialogue and everything together. But it's the showrunners to make sure that everything makes sense. If they don't do that, other than like, other than like the main plot points, that's their fault. <laughs> so, so what did David do? So, and we're talking about like his his speech at the end. It's I, I like his speech at the end, like his, you know, we are both, like, mm-hmm. we are both our Enchanted Forest sides and our Storybrooke sides. I wouldn't give up Charming just to be David and I wouldn't make the switch. I wouldn't make the other switch either, which I think is great. And this is what I say about, like, kind of the acting going forward is that I think the actors did a good job of melding the two characters together. I think according to the commentary, they didn't think they did that good of a job or that they did that much. But I do think there is a difference in the way that they're acting because he's not just charming now he's not just he, he is more charming forward but the way josh dallas is acting in storybrook is different than we've ever seen him as david nolan or as charming mm-hmm. there is some combination of the two of them going on so like that is it's important to and it's a good speech it's a little repetitive like you know he's he's trying he's like you know i am both you are both the town is both i'm like okay maybe we stop with the the both thing but at the end of the day, it got the point across. Yeah, he might he might still need to work on his uh, his uh, his motivational speaking skills, but I think well, like he said, first Snow, try. like he said, he did say though, Snow usually does the talking, which is fair. Which actually, yeah, as I, which which is accurate as we see going forward. He he he's he's the muscle. I say in 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 our inevitable five man band. Uh, who you will meet the final member of in two episodes, but like the whole five man band won't really come together until the beginning of season three, but you'll know you'll, you'll have met our final member. Uh, Charming is the tank. He, he's the muscle. <laughs> Not surprised. He's, he's the guy with the sword. 
like I said, he always, it's, he came in with the pointy thing. Mm-hmm. He did. My very last funny note uh, is just, there's no way any of that running while handcuffed was Jennifer. No, I was actually thinking that. I was like, I've been informed too many times that that, that it's not Jennifer Goodwin. She's not the running, just no running. No, no none for her. So if there was, is if there is running or falling or anything with bodily actions, unless you can see her face, that is not Jennifer Goodwin. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Join us next time when we discuss Bob's Burgers season three, episode twenty one, Boys for Now, and episode twenty two, Carpe Museum. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen, so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at obdyk underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Lauren and Katie and edited by Lauren.